They may sound like superheroes, but super PACs don't save the world or politics from the bad guys. These strange legal hybrids are more Godzilla than Superman, and they're all over the 2012 Republican race. Back in more innocent political times, PACs went about their business raising money for candidates or parties with much less controversy. There were strict rules on the amounts that individuals and organizations could donate, and even more restrictions on when and how PACs could spend their money. But that all changed in 2010, when regular PACs turned into super PACs, much more aggressive and much more dangerous. The rules were challenged by big money action groups like Citizens United, who sound like cuddly liberals, but are actually conservative advocates. And the U.S. courts handed down a set of controversial decisions. Caps on individual contributions to independent PACs were abolished, meaning that any billionaire could write check after check in support of their favorite candidate. Judges also ruled that companies and unions should be treated the same as ordinary people. Super PACs have been sucking in the cash ever since. By law, super PACs have to remain independent and aren't allowed to contribute to or coordinate with election campaigns. But as the comedian Stephen Colbert has shown, people running super PACs are often friends or former associates of candidates and are anything but impartial. This means super PACs can run and finance commercials aimed for or against specific candidates. That's why you could turn on a TV in Iowa or Florida during the Republican primary campaign and watch Republicans beating on Republicans in every break. But if you think the campaigning by Romney, Gingrich, and the rest of the Republicans has been toxic, just wait until the Democrats join in. That'll make the Republican primary look like a pillow fight. Thanks, Super PACs.